the worst Zelda game ever has been ported to Game Boy. Hello, my name is Brendan, and this is Sunday Quickie on Retro Game On. If you're unaware, in Sunday Quickie, we take a look at events and happenings in the retro gaming world, and we do it in a way that's unscripted um, with, you know, low production values. The idea is to try and stay on top of brand new news and serve it to you as it comes out. So, today, well, today's actually Monday, I guess I should mention that. I slept pretty badly on Saturday and didn't feel like doing it yesterday, so I guess this is a Sunday, a, a Monday quickie. I nearly said Sunday quickie. It's just so interwined in my brain. Monday quickie. You don't care about that. Let's get on with the video. Worst Zelda game gets new life as fan-made Game Boy D make. One person decided it would be a lot more fun to play Zelda's adventure on a Game Boy instead of a CDI. And I'm sure a lot of people would agree with that. So, bit of backstory, I'm sure many of you know. Um, I'm going to quickly reference a video I made a couple of months ago about the Nintendo PlayStation prototype. It's part of my Wonders of the Retro Gaming World series. Basically, Nintendo was supposed to work with Sony, and Sony was going to make a disk drive. This is a very abridged version of the story, by the way. There was enough info in there for like a 20 minute long video. Uh, but basically, Nintendo then completely dogged Sony and went with Philips instead. And what we got from that was the CDI, some, which some consider some of the worst console ever made. One of the worst consoles. But basically, basically because of that Nintendo-Philips relationship, there were a few Nintendo games on the CDI, which is kind of weird because Nintendo just never licensed their stuff out to other platforms ever. And the result of that was three very awful Zelda games. There was two side-scrollers and one top-down adventure game. Um, and like I said, these are widely considered to be the worst Zelda games ever. Um, John Lay, who is this guy, he is a programmer from the UK, and he thought the third Zelda game that was released, called Zelda's Adventures, there was something there, and he, and he thought it would be quite fun to play on the Game Boy. So I wanted to, uh, I don't have a CDI, so I was going to download a ROM. I was just going to be a bit of a privateer on the high seas and just play an emulated version of Zelda's Adventure, just so I could give you some side-by-side -side comparison footage. I couldn't really get the CDI emulator to work for various reasons, but luckily on his YouTube page, and everything you see here will be linked down below, he already does that. So I'll put in my own footage in a second of me playing, but as you can see on the left, that's the CDI version with its kind of interesting graphics, I will say. And on the right, we get his D-Make. So Zelda's Adventure is kind of an interesting one as you actually play as Zelda saving Link. So I guess that's why he thought that the, uh, you know, there was something there for a D-Make. And basically, because he's porting this to Game Boy, he's sticking with the aesthetics of Link's Awakening, which is considered to be the best Zelda game on the platform. But he's also incorporating features from a couple of Game Boy Color Zelda games, in this case, which are Oracle of Ages and Oracle of Seasons. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not the biggest Zelda fan ever. I've got nothing against it. I'm just not really into the gameplay. So I'm sort of spouting out information here and I don't really understand what I'm saying. But I like the idea of this and that's why I'm covering it. Basically, it started as a COVID project and I'm sure there is bazillions of those, many of them not finished. Luckily, this one was, but it took him about 14 months total in development time. And it's a complete port of the original game, completely ported straight across, just obviously with Game Boy graphics. He made it in a program called GB Studio, which is a game engine specifically for making Game Boy games and Maybe, or Game Boy Pocket at least. I was going to say Game Boy Color, but maybe not. Anyway, I don't know too much about that either. But basically, it's a, it's a game, it's, it's, it's designed specifically so you can export directly and play on real hardware. So I'll show you links and stuff to where you can download the ROMs later on. And, try and, try, and I'd recommend trying doing that before Nintendo nukes it, like they do with every cool project like this. But basically, this will run on a real Game Boy if you have a ROM cartridge. He did have to make a few modifications though. I think GB Studio is reasonably limited. It is a free platform, but like I said, he is a programmer, so he made it work. He put in custom code. And it looks like he's made this entire game by himself, except for the music, which was farmed out to a composer called Beatscribe. So here is the, uh, the itch.io page for it. Like I said, I'll link this in the description. You can actually play this in the browser, so you don't even need to download the ROM and run it through an emulator 
if you don't want to, which is pretty cool. Um, I guess that'd be Windows and Mac. I didn't try it. When I was looking at this on my phone, it did give a warning saying it might not work, but I didn't actually try. I probably should have. Anyway, I downloaded the ROM and it totally works. You can download it here for free, but you can give a donation for his work. Not that he would be able to sell this anyway, because as I said, Nintendo are very protective of their IPs for better or worse. And they've brought down many projects like this before. And if they bring down this project, they'll probably bring down this video. So yeah, that'll be, that'd be interesting to get contacted by Nintendo, but we'll see. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Sunday Quickie, and I'll catch you in the next one.